Good morning, everyone. It's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And earlier today, we put out my top five worst summonable battle units that came out between the second and third anniversary, which is literally tomorrow. So, figured we'd do the same thing with uh, the top five worst protectors to come out in between the second and third anniversary. Now, this... Uh, yeah. There's a lot less protectors that come out. You know, it's one a month versus at least three battle units. So the pickings are quite slim. And five is almost half of the protectors to come out. And to be perfectly honest, most of the protectors that came out in 2024-ish have been fairly solid. If not very generic or very powerful in their own rights, they've, they've been fairly good. But there are a few standouts that just don't cut it and whether or not that's because they came out a year ago and they've aged or because their gimmick is stupid you know there there's a number of reasons so uh some of these have caveats i think these have more caveats than maybe the battle units because those are very very locked to the protector so i, I think number five and number four will be mm, you could debate them but the top three I'm pretty solid in, so let's just go ahead and jump in. All right, the top five worst protector is New Year's Blessings. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 I'm very much kidding there. Uh, it's actually gonna be Coleus Lumi, the the second anniversary protector, and this is probably gonna set a number of few people off, but just, just hear me out, okay? She is a good protector when you need synergy. That's it, though. Like, she is the baseline, I need synergy rate, okay, you can have synergy rate. She's stacking on Visions of Coleus and Octogram Demon Lord, which Visions of Coleus is never getting another unit unless they do some kind of sequel to Visions of Coleus, which I really don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think that's happening. So she's buffing a team that's never going to get another buff again. She is a traditional stacking blue character. Fine. And then she's giving 12% attack, which is fairly standard. She gives you guaranteed synergy, and then she raises your skill point cat or skill points on blues by 100 up to 500. These are all very basic things. And in in the event where you don't want to use synergy, then you get 12% stacking attack. Now, the Visions of Coleus team, when fully put together, does a lot of damage. It it did a whole butt ton of damage, and it's still a really good team. I think that's more because of the battle units, Blanc and Violet and Rainbow or Rimuru. Like these are very solid characters. And then John being the single target DPS with a hundred and seventy percent alt and thirty percent synergy power. It's like that. That's really a lot of damage. But if you were to just not use them and just bring Lumi as a normal stacking protector, especially in a fight where they nerf synergy, she's not going to work. And you take this away, and she's very, very basic. It, synergy is a good buff, but if you remove this, she's not really doing much, and she's only doing a little bit for one primary team, which is getting buffed because we just got the new guy in Milam, Autogram Demon Lord units, but Visions of Coleus has never seen the light of day again as far as new summonable units is concerned. So I think that's why she's number five. All right, number four worst protector to come out. I'm kind of flip-flopping a little bit, I'm going to put Maribel. I, I'm going to flip-flop between three and four quite a bit. Maribel, as a protector, I, I mean, she's doing a lot, but at the same time, she's not doing as much as you want her to. So she's got the control effect where you can get up, you know, the low end is 15% weakness strike stacks, and the high end is 90. So it's like, that's a huge gap in between because... If you use her twice, you can put two stacks on. If you use her once, you can put one. And if you have one target, you can put two stacks for 30%. If you have three targets and two stacks each, that's 90%. So if you're in an AoE setting and you have two uses of your protection skill, you can get 90% weakness strike at the end of the turn. Not immediately. So that means the units have to stay up front, which means they have to be in the line of fire, which means you can't really hold big time buffs not that this team 
wants to use a, a multitude of big time buffs but you know that stacking teams generally want you to hold some like big 100 percent magic or 100 percent attack buff and then send them away and bring them back when and get a stack on and then send them back away you can't really do that with maribel so the weakness strike because it, you have to have them up front removes some of the team building options and strategies and it's just a vast pool divide between how effective she is at low end and how effective she is at maximum capacity like 90 percent weakness strike every single turn or every other turn sounds good 15 percent eh, not so much she gives you guard and super uh, super guard which is fine for defensively focused teams Guard does not protect against alts, though, and most of the time, the game is going to kill you when the enemy alts you, and guard does not do anything for that. It only affects normal orb damage. And then she gives you 300 skill points on blues, which Maribel did get, I would say, a fairly significant buff with the new skill point increase to 150, and it does make her a little bit more viable when running her team specifically. And then on top of that, she passively resets your skill costs on the front and back line, which is what Idol Rimuru does, but he only does the front line. So Maribel's doing a lot, but it's just a vast gap in how much actual weakness strike you're getting. You have to leave him up front. Guard doesn't protect you against alts, because like Vengeance Raphael, yeah, like his guard doesn't protect you from alts either. But he also has 50% element resistance, and he seals attack, crit, and pierce, which will protect you from a lot of enemy alts. So that's why he's really good, and Maribel is oh, not so good. She can save you. She can give you a lot of points. She can give you weakness strike, but at the sacrifice of some other things. But at least she does reset your skills slowly but surely. But if you've ever used the Prosper team, you know that you're going to use Lumi's Convert every single turn. And so, is is it decreasing? Yeah. Is it is it great? Eh, still no. But she did get a lot better with the 150 skill point increase. The number three worst protector to come out, in my opinion, and these are all my opinions, and I know a lot of people have opinions on my opinions, is going to be Trainee. Tempest Elite Trainee. She's just, she's not, not good. She, she's, she's not. Like, you, you look at her and you'd be like, oh, you get an EX alt every single time you use her. Well, that sounds nice. Okay, cool. It's the highest attack. So if you mess up and you leave some unit and you don't want it, all right, well, you gave them the alt instead, which is just a misplay. She gives you a 70% 70 70 skill point increase versus Maribel's 300. So that's already not great and then she's got the stupid freaking follow-up orbs which is just probably one of the worst mechanics ever to come out in this game and they're they've tripled down on it now between goddess of destiny this trainee and then the protector of peace Shion. it's just it's so very unnecessary for most of the game and the damage output is not what you want unless you're literally doing millions upon millions of damage which you can do with a better team but this trainee she gives you 30 skill points you know every turn and up to turn five just like all the other burst protectors do like that's fine um this is way too low this uh, it, you know is is a gimmick like yeah you can get a really quick alt you can also do that with ex orbs or uh not not ex orbs but rainbow orbs oh sure okay whatever like we don't really have problems rushing alts like, this will get you a lot of alt very quickly. Okay, that, that's cool. I, I don't care about follow-up orbs, though. If my orbs are doing 10,000 damage, okay, they're doing five grand a piece, and with beatdown bosses having millions of HP now, that's not really making that much of a dent. And then the alt damage is 20%, which, if you use training in, like, a fire team with burn, and you have these fire orbs and Rimuru or some fire unit is doing you know, 20 bajillion damage. Like, yeah, the burn, the follow-ups will do a bajillion damage and the burn will kick in and, yeah, cool, whatever. That's very specific, though. Very, very specific. And I already put Reamer as my number one worst unit of last of this year. And it makes sense that Trainee would be in this list as well. I'm just not overly impressed with her and I never really use her because in Jubilee, like normal battles, when you need extra damage against Earth, like, I'm not bringing Trainee. Her follow-up orbs mean jack shit. And if I need an EX alt for a fire unit, 
I'm just gonna bring an orb stealer and a rainbow orb changer, <laughs> and we're and we're set. So this has no bearing on really anything. She's just not super impressive. The number two worst protector in the game is a very very. It's like uh, it's like Maribel. There's a very large divide of usefulness, and that's gonna be protector of peace Masayuki. Now he is doing a literal butt ton of stuff. Like let's not let's not sweep that under the rug. He does a lot. But how good is that a lot really? Well, uh, it's really debatable on how hard did you did you wail. Like Lumi, Maribel, Trainee, they don't need wailed units. Like you can you can use other substitutional units to get the most out of them. Masuki is the complete opposite of that. He has the inspire mechanic only for physical allies, so it's not for everybody. And every time you hit an enemy three times, you get four percent attack, and it will go up to forty percent. Now you have to hit the enemy a lot to do this, and the reason why he's so gimmicky is because he requires you to pretty much have the protector of peace. Shion with the follow-up orbs requires you to have the protector of peace Hinata with the triple multi-hit on every green orb like that's the only way and even if you run both of them you still don't actually ever cap out Masayuki at his full 40 percent you need to rewind or get a literal fuck ton of counterattacks. It, it's he's just you never max him out you get to like 36 percent or something somewhere close to that you never actually get to 40 which 36% attack every single turn, you know, is cool because he's allowing you to use skills an unlimited number of times. So you could use a whole bunch of small orb changes that give you stacking crit or stacking alt or whatever, weakness strike. He lowers your skill cost every single time you use him, which means you can use skills over and over and over and over again. He is doing a lot. He's raising your skill cap by 50, just like every other stacking protector. It's just that the difference between a base level Masayuki without his Protector of Peace team versus Masayuki with the full Protector of Peace team is like night and day. And I'm talking like darkest, deepest, blackest night versus uh, I live in the Arctic where the sun never sets. So that by itself means that he is hyper limited at full usability to a very specific team setup. And if you try and use him really anywhere else, he's really not that good. Like if you don't worry about the inspire mechanic at all, you get unlimited number of skills, you get a reset and you get a skill cap increase. Like that's just heavily inferior to what Overlord Rimuru is doing. Cause Overlord Rimuru is resetting your skills when you use them. Okay, he's raising your skill cap, okay. But instead of having the stupid unlimited number of times you can use a skill, he's giving you 100% up to 5% extra skill points, which means you don't have to bring Protector of Peace Geld to give you the skill points. Like, Reamer is just doing it automatically. Masayuki, like, this is great and all, but he's not actually giving you extra skill points to get up to his new cap every single turn. You need another battle unit to do that. So he is just heavily limited and heavily locked to running a very specific team, and if you try and run him doing anything else, he's just ass. He's terrible. He doesn't do what you want him to do. And even when you do want him to do this, it's like, that's great, but you need, need, necessary, these characters. And they're both on single banners. That's not good value right there. So, Masayuki, second worst protector. When he when he's working, he's working. But it, when he's not working, God, he's terrible. And the number one worst protector in the game has you know part of the same gimmick that Masayuki has. Violet, primal demon Violet. She is so fucking stupid and useless that I don't know what to do with her. So. It, it's it's strange that Lumi is number five and Violet's number one. Synergy, when you use it, can be really good and very powerful. And there's mo like ninety percent of the game you can synergy. All the early game content where because synergy came out with the second anniversary with the Visions of Coley's team, so that means they didn't start nerfing it until 
over two years into the game. So everything that came out prior to that, you can synergy all you want, and <laughs> you're going to do a butt ton of damage. Okay, that's great. That's really good. There's only specific stages now that nerf synergy. Violet, though, she's giving primal demons. So not even two categories, just one category. Primal demon, which we are getting more primal demons. I'll give them that. 12% attack. The same thing as Lumi. They both give 12% attack. Lumi gives it to two different teams, one of which is dead, though. And uh, primal demon for Violet. She then has the unlimited number of skills gimmick. Oh, excellent. She's meant to be used with, uh, where are they? Blanc and Jean, where Blanc has zero cost skills and she's doing small, tiny buffs over and over again. And then Jean resets it back down to zero and gives you 300 skill points to allow you to use even more of those skills. And then she's giving you the 100 to 500% um, skill point increase and raising your skill cap. Okay, well, that's great. Just like Vi just like Lumi, though, if you take the actual primary gimmick away, the un unlimited number of battle skills, she's giving you 12% attack to one team, and she's giving you skill cap increase. Like, whoopty fucking do. That's not even useful for, like... I mean, 12% attack, yeah, can be useful for mo all of the game, but this is her primary gimmick, and if you take this away, one, Blanc no longer works very well, and if you don't have Blanc and you don't have Jean... Like, what are you getting out of this skill? Most big-time stacking teams only need you to use a skill one time. Like, orb changes, yeah, sure, you could use an orb change twice in a turn. That's excellent, fine, whatever. But if a properly well-built team only has, like, two or three orb changes, you don't need to use the same one three times in a row. For big-time 80-point buffs from, like, Ogre's Pride Soe and Momiji, like, you're not using those twice in a turn because you don't get anything out of it. They just overlap and they cancel one of them out. It, so like Soe with his 70% atta magic atta or attack for magic allies, just because you use that skill twice doesn't mean you have 140 now. No, it's just, it's still 70. And then the synergy power, whatever, whatever you got that up to. So traditional stacking teams don't need to use these skills over and over. It's, it's only built for Blanc. And Blanc only really works if you have Jean as well to reset it down. Otherwise, like they get really expensive really quickly and you're only gonna get a, a couple uses out of them. So Violet without her gimmick is the same as like Water Millum from 2022 at that point. 10% element buff and stacking skill points and a, and a cap increase. That's not great. That's not great. One team, like, if she had led another team, if she had done, like, one more thing, fine. I, I, sure, she would be fine. And then, like, Renard came out just a couple months later, and he's stacking at least two things. He's doing weakness strike and alt resistance down, which, I mean, those combined shit on this 12% attack. And it's unrestricted. Like, anyone can use weakness strike and anyone can use alt resistance down, as long as they are type advantage and they have an alt. So, Violet my number one worst protector to come out because she is just so useless if you take away this gimmick and you don't you're not specifically running Blanc and Jean. Like, sure, you can have her lead um like Diablo or like Commander Diablo. Like, yeah, sure, you, you can. I'd just run Renard. I'd I'd run someone else that's gonna give Diablo even more than just twelve percent attack. It's not like I'm using his full green convert twice in a row, because I'm already converting every single green orb with him anyways. So that's my logic. That's my reasoning. These are my top five worst protectors to release of 2024. You let me know in the comments, as you have for the other video, what you think of this. Would you flip any of them around? Uh, I don't really think anyone else deserves to be on this list, actually. It was kind of a pain putting Lumi here, but eh, I had to put someone. Guy is good. Mills is fine. Benny Maru, where is he? He's fine once you get to turn eight. Renard is fine. Exalted Champion, you can't argue anything about her or Xion. Idol Rimuru literally makes you invincible. Like, it, it, it's very clear. But you let me know what you guys think. That's it for me. Take it easy. And I will see you all bright and early tomorrow morning for the third anniversary live stream.